Teachers with former students returning to visit you, what's the most unexpected thing they've told you? Story 1. I've taught in the military for many years, and I substitute teach in my time off in local schools around town. I absolutely love teaching. It's so much fun to go into a class and not know what you're getting into. And when you're substitute teaching, you have to try and figure out how to connect with a random group of kids. Sometimes it works, and sometimes it doesn't. But more often than not, I succeed. I hope to be a real teacher when I retire in a few years from the military. Anyways, this story is about one of my students when I started teaching in the military. I'll call him Cornhusker. Cornhusker was a student I had in my first year of teaching. I always remember that he had a big smile on his face, and he'd do these awesome Yoda or George Bush impressions to lighten the class up. Having a person like this in your classroom is always a joy. He was a great guy, and he and I continued to talk and correspond after he graduated the class. I ended up starting a public speaking group on the base, and he was one of the members that always came out to the events and supported everything we did. And as I was doing all this stuff on the side, I was still teaching 10 to 12 hours a day when you count lesson preparation. I was getting worn out. I gave a lot of myself to each class, and this can be emotionally exhausting work. My old boss, kind of like the school principal, once told me that he was worried about my health because I put so much of myself out there. And as a teacher, you rarely get that back in return from the students. I didn't really know what he meant at the time, but as the years went on, I began to understand what he meant. You empty so much of yourself in each class that it can be so hard when that isn't reciprocated or noticed by anyone. It can make you tired and jaded. Well, this good boss ended up leaving the school and we got a new boss in his place. She said she wasn't going to change anything. Note to self, whenever someone says they aren't going to change something, that means they're going to change everything. It was a nightmare working for her. She was an obsessive micromanager. She was able to get results, but only by grinding her people down to the bone. But she was able to mind control you in the same way that a psychologically abusive mother can control her children. I promise you this story is leading somewhere. This woman started to sap my will to teach out of me. And through a combination of always putting myself out there and never getting anything back in return, I started to dislike teaching. The new boss and I got into a huge fight one morning, and I started to question my self-worth and what I was doing as a teacher in the military. But totally out of the blue and without any prompting from me, I got an email from Cornhusker that very afternoon. He said that it was obvious that I put myself out there and tried my best to make all my students and everyone around me better. He said even though this was obvious, he didn't think that people ever told me how much they appreciated this. It was the most perfectly timed email I've ever received, and one that I still cherish. He then proceeds to write two paragraphs of the nicest compliments I'd ever read. I was floored, stunned. I was like the gods of karma, and they had told him to send me that message so that it could keep me going. And it did. I kept teaching the way I wanted to, and the way I believed was right. I put all my effort into teaching, doubled down on my efforts, and a cool thing started to happen. More and more of my old students started sending me random messages, telling me how much they appreciated me as an instructor or coming by my office to say hello. It was a great feeling. I knew what I was doing was the right thing. In the moment when I most questioned my abilities, Cornhusker managed to bring me up when I most needed it. I think these random acts of kindness happen too infrequently. So I always make it a point after I've read a good story or article to message the author and tell them why I enjoyed it. If I listen to an unknown band and really dig their music, I'll shoot them an email on Facebook. And it's all because Cornhusker taught me how powerful a random message from someone can keep you going when you're at your lowest point. And the same goes for liking and subscribing to YouTube channels. Story 2. I sucked at math. I sucked at math so freaking hard. I think it had more to do with our ridiculous method of teaching concepts from the top down rather than the bottom up that tripped me up. But for whatever reason, I almost failed every single math class I ever took. And I almost ended up not graduating. I had one math teacher my junior year of high school that really busted her butt to help me graduate. Got me into credit recovery for some of my previously failed math classes and probably single-handedly saved my butt, butt, my butt, butt. <laughs> I was not sure if I was going to get to graduate until five minutes before the ceremony. 
I did thank her, but not as much as I should have. I didn't have the perspective to truly understand what she and my counselor did to get me through it. I went to community college for a year, but had to make up at least two semesters worth of math classes. The requirements changed a year before I got there. So I ended up dropping out. I did get a job as a help desk monkey at a managed service provider, though. Did a lot of tech work, got promoted up the help desk as far as I could go, and formed a really good mentoring relationship with the guy who owns the company. He's the quintessential hands-on management type. I ended up quitting because my direct boss was a jerk who didn't respect my boundaries. Found another job as a sysadmin. It paid very well, but I didn't feel like the work was very important or rewarding. It was an alternative media company. So I asked the company owner if I could come back as purely a network engineer and nothing else. He agreed and matched my current salary, plus profit sharing. Plus, I get to run my own department autonomously, so I went back. A year or so later, my role has been evolving somewhat. I'm currently in the build-out stage for a bunch of new products and services being hosted out of our data center that were mostly my brainchild. I'm finally in a place to put money into savings, as well as a nice discretionary fund to do interesting stuff with. I'm 22 years old and haven't accepted a single dime of help from my parents since I was 19. My boss, the company owner, is very active in the community, as it turns out, including being on the board of trustees for the school district I attended high school at. I told him about how this teacher helped me out massively, and he nominated her for Teacher of the Year, opening this proposal with my story. I really wish I could have seen her face when she heard it. I really need to go visit her again. She definitely wasn't the only teacher that shaped my future, but my life would have gone in a completely different direction had I not graduated on time. Story 3. This is more the unexpected thing I told my former teacher when I became a teacher and, in return, the unexpected reply. When I started teaching at the high school from which I graduated, I went to a party at one of the administrator's houses the weekend before the first day of class. In attendance was my old 11th and 12th grade literature teacher, about 30 years my senior, smart and attractive as heck. She had taken early retirement the year before, but was still hanging out with old colleagues, and me. As the night went on, I got it in my head that I should ask Janet out, so I made my move, about six beers in. I proposed we get dinner and drinks at a local establishment one night. She patted me on the head sweetly and said no. She couldn't go on a date with someone 30 years her junior, much less a former student. I plied her a little bit, assuring her that my intentions were innocent and that she'd always been my favorite teacher. And she actually said yes. Well, she said, okay, fine. But I was completely floored that I'd actually succeeded. Long story short, we have coffee, talk on the phone some, and when things started getting familiar, she got weird, and that was the end of it. Still felt like a triumph to 23-year-old me. Story 4. Late to this thread, and we'll probably get buried, but I had a 6th grade science teacher who was really fun, and I used to stay after class to talk to him, and we became friends. I was always the kind of kid who got along better with the adults than with the other kids. A few years later, I was at a different school for middle school, and there was a geography bee, and by some miracle, I won it. I didn't even realize a geography bee existed until the day it happened. Apparently, I have a very good visual memory. For some reason, later that day, I had occasion to stop by my old elementary school to say hi to that 6th grade science teacher. He was very happy to see me, and we chatted for a while. I mentioned at the beginning that there had been a geography bee that day, but I didn't say how I fared, and we changed the subject and caught up about other things. He eventually asked me, so, how'd you do in the geography bee? I said, oh, uh, I won, and I reached into my pocket and pulled out the medal I had been given. He almost fell out of his chair. You won? It was great to see him, and great to give him that surprise. Story 5. Had to do a project when we were kids in high school where we look at budgeting, college, and future finances. I went to the movies, and a student was working the concession. I asked what he was up to, and he said the fire academy at the local JC. He said he did that project and had to amend the future he had planned. Part of the project includes a sample community college entrance exam. 60% of kids don't pass. He attributed that to his decision. I felt kind of bad. I actually affected his future, and I don't know if it's for the better. I saw a student from my first year. I've been at this 10 years, but your first year is like a car accident. Memorable. 
One student, she was a little doo-doo, she would find these little ways to mess with me, just to mess with me. I'd call home, and mom would just shrug it off. A couple months ago, I saw her at the mall. She'd be 26 or so by now. She was working mall security. I don't wish anything bad on her, but it figures. Story 6. Well, back in 2008, I was an English teacher. My students were mostly 12 or 13 and were really nice to me. Except for this girl who was a juvenile witch. There wasn't a day that she wouldn't get on my nerves. I quit at the end of that year to pursue other interests. Last year, I went back to the school to see my former colleagues, and as I was talking to the head teacher, my ex-student is leaving her class. She sees me, makes that, oh my god, it's you, face, runs towards me and gives me a very tight hug, saying she's missed me and that all other teachers she had sucked. She then asks me if I've got some time, and we go grab a bite. She said the only reason she behaved like that was because she had a major crush on me. We've now been dating for a year and a half. Yay. TLDR, female problem student, said she only gave me so much trouble because she had a crush on me. We are together now. Story 7. Here's the opposite of what you want. While waiting outside for my wife, who was getting a coffee at Starbucks, I saw one of my previous teachers walk in and stand in the line about two people behind my wife. I opened the door and walked up to my wife and told her I just needed to take care of something and that I'd meet her in the car. Then I turned around, made eye contact with my old teacher, and as soon as he recognized me, I open-handed slapped him right across the face, hard. He crumpled down immediately to the ground, and I said, I sure as hell hope you're not teaching anymore. Then I walked out and waited for my wife in the car. So, yeah, I imagine that was a little unexpected for him. I hit him because he was a dong and used to verbally and physically abuse me. I was too young and scared to stand up for myself or tell anyone. Story 8. I've been a substitute teacher for the same school district for the past eight years. Four years ago, I had taken over for a fifth grade teacher with cancer from November to the last day of school. The teacher ended up passing away that April. So sad. Well, when I went up to the middle school while these kids were in seventh grade, a student from that fifth grade class came up to me. Student. Hey, Mrs. B, I just wanted to let you know that you letting us do free writing in the beginning of each day has really made me love creative writing. I'm going to write a book someday. Me. Aw, I'm so glad you enjoyed that time. Make sure you dedicate your first book to me. Or something like that. As just a substitute, this was pretty amazing for me. It made me feel good that I was someone's inspiration without actually having my own classroom. Story 9. When I was a sophomore, I gave my English teacher hell. I'll spare you the details. Fast forward 10 years, and I'm a teacher at the same school she teaches at. This was 10 years ago, roughly. I go up to her at the teacher workshop before school and say, Hey, Mrs. So-and-so, you used to teach me at XYZ school. I'm really sorry for the way I treated you. I was a stupid kid back then. She says, No, I couldn't have taught you. I transferred to ABC school in 94 at mid-semester. Me. Yes, you taught me first semester, and you transferred halfway through my year. We had a new teacher after you. Her. What's your name? Me. I tell her, and at this point, she makes a face like she's seen the devil and walks off without saying a word. No joke. Part of me felt terrible, and the other part of me was ticked off. Story 10. I wasn't really a teacher, but I was a co-director for an after-school program. I'm white, and everybody else was black. This didn't really bother me, and I didn't think it was a big deal at all. Well, a couple years later, I ran into a student, and he told his friends, in front of me, that I was the only white person who ever liked him. This made me sad, and I later asked him, what did you mean by that? And he said something like, oh, you're the only white person that thought I could amount to anything. I hope to God he's wrong about that, and I told him something like he doesn't need white people to like him to become successful. Story 11. Late to the party, but I was the student who went back to visit my guidance counselor. Senior year, I had a complete mental breakdown. Later found out my parents almost institutionalized me. Yikes. Went to her office one morning because I felt like my life was falling apart. This June, I brought her my transcript. I'm graduating summa cum laude with a degree in cellular and molecular biology, with a minor in chemistry come this December, and I applied to medical school. I had made it after all. She cried. I found out she's been using me as an example for struggling seniors now. It makes me proud. 
Story 12. Kinda the opposite, but I ran into a former teacher a few years ago at the supermarket. Now, I was a complete idiot at high school, class clown who failed pretty much everything, her class especially. Anyway, we talked for a bit, and she asked me what I was doing these days, probably expecting me to say unemployment. The look of shock and surprise on her face was priceless when I said that I'd just finished my master's degree and was about to start working for one of the top four consulting firms in the world. I'm glad this person feels proud of themselves for this, but assuming they're referring to the big four accounting firms like Deloitte, PwC, Ernst & Young, and KPMG, then I'm at least of the opinion that they could be better off than they think they are. I worked at one of these places for three years right out of college, and it quickly became apparent to me that I wasn't actually living the glamorous life that they sold me. You're overworked and underpaid and pressured to eat your billable hours, meaning that you don't charge the actual time that you worked on a project in order to stay within the budget. Ultimately, you can make way more money doing less work in the same field except for an actual company within the industry instead of as a public consulting firm. I know my experience doesn't ring true for every part of these firms, but at least for me, I still have a bit of a sour taste. I was not cut out for that lifestyle. Story 13. I'm not a teacher, but I'm actually the principal of a high school. There was that one annoying kid who would always come into my office to make suggestions on how to make the school a better place. I mean, it's rather admirable. However, the ideas were rather unique, you could say. Examples include to allow skateboards in hallways, to prevent people from running in hallways, or having to extend the lunch break from 15 to 30 minutes. He was always such a nice kid, and now my assistant principal. Story 14. Visited my phys ed teacher, he always assumed I was just a lazy blow-off because I slept through his 7 a.m. class a few times. I was generally pretty respectful, but he was always a huge dong to me and everyone for no reason. First thing he says, how are you? Where are you these days? Insert local community college in a super condescending voice. Stanford felt freaking great. Story 15. Former student. Hey, remember me? You always used to scold me by saying, Pay attention! Nobody is going to pay you to stare out a window! Oh yes, what do you do now? Uh, I'm an airline pilot. Please leave your stories in the comments. I'd love to make a video of them in the future. Also, don't forget to like and subscribe.